So stupidly, instead of celebrating the birthday and waiting until an appropriate time, I bought him a book, How to Deal with Your Gay oh, Son. Oh boy, oh boy. That was his birthday gift for me. <laughs> Surprise. Uh, yeah. In the past, I've typically not been a relationship person. Growing up gay in a conservative Texas town, like I think a lot of that was kind of me shielding myself from other people. For the last few years, I've started to like break that down a bit and allow myself to feel love from other people and allow myself to be open to the possibility of a relationship. My last relationship was over two years ago and it ended really poorly. When it ended, I realized that I had allowed myself to become somebody who I was not, just to try and be that person because I was so desperate to have somebody say the words, I love you. I took that time to just really go back into myself um, and build myself back up. And so now, you know, two years later, I feel like I'm ready to get back into it. To quote my personal life coach, Beyonce, I just want to be happy. I'm open. I'm open to, to being guided down, down the path of, you know, making reservations for two and picking out, I don't know, bath towels or something. At this point, I don't date just to date. I, I date now with an intention of writing a story together. And so I'd like to meet a co-author. And if you have great eyes and a great butt, then I mean, that's just frosting on top of an already great cake. Your name is Brandon, and this is your story. You are 24 years old. For work, you are a graphic designer. You grew up in New York, and your family heritage is Middle Eastern. Your astrological sign is Taurus. Your height is five foot 10 inches. My name is Kian, and this is my story. I am 26 years old. I work in TV and film development. I grew up in the Dallas, Texas area, and my family heritage is Colombian and also Jewish. My astrological sign is a Cancer, and I am 6'4". Wow. Your name is Blake, and this is your story. You are 27 years old. For work, you are a nurse. You grew up in Chicago, and your family heritage is Irish, or maybe, maybe Portuguese in there. Your astrological sign is Libra, and your height is 6'1". My name is Aaron, and this is my story. I am 25 years old. For work, I am an actor who works seven part-time jobs. <laughs> I grew up in Nebraska, and my heritage is Irish. My astrological sign is Cancer, and my height is six foot even. So you're a Cancer too? I am a Cancer. Okay. Do you take this seriously at all? I know that it's like not real science, but I do love to ask people like oh, what yeah. their birth chart is as soon as we meet each other. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I think like when you're born does impact you. My as a logic is like the moon can affect like the ocean and like the waves and like why can't it affect us? Which might be entirely wrong science, but <laughs> it, it sounds great. Yeah. It sounds great. <laughs> I'm really impressed that you guessed Iris. I thought about it for a minute. I was like, this is fair skin. He probably sunburns a good amount. I'm guessing it's probably Irish. Is that true? It it is, yes. <laughs> I've been hospitalized twice because of sunburns. No. Yeah. Uh, so Kean, mm -hmm. is that Colombian? It's not, and I always feel like a fraud when people ask me about that. The name Kian is actually pronounced Kian, but I don't pronounce it that way, and it's a Persian name. Uh, my mom, not Persian to my knowledge, has never been to Iran before, but she wanted to name me a K name, but didn't want to do Kevin or Kyle. Someone told her about my name, she picked it, and the rest is history. Maybe that's where just the essence of Middle Eastern came to me there. Because that's... I've like grown into it. I've, just, I've, I've, I've accepted this You're like, being put me. onto me. Yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious. Oh, no. Yeah, Aaron, I feel like 
is the most basic <clears throat> white person name you can be. <laughs> My parents, obviously, both very white, both very Irish, uh -huh. and they're like, let's give our kid the whitest name. But it, people usually just call me A.A. Ron. <laughs> yes, of course. Peel, yep. I like sensed some Midwest. <laughs> that was what I told I myself. Get that so much. I mean, I get told so much, especially since I moved out here. Like, yeah. Are you from the Midwest? They can so, smell it on you. I guess. What <laughs> what is it about me that looks Midwest? I think it's like the bright colors, the bright smile. That to me, I was like, I, I feel this for him. This is his journeys. The Midwest made the move to Los Angeles. Right, yeah. You tend to eat out often. You do you love to cook. You hate spicy foods. The one food you can't stand is tomatoes. Your idea of comfort food is corn. If you can only eat one thing for the rest of your life, it would be eggplant. The one food you can make really well is tacos. Uh, you would cook for someone on the third date, and I'm taking some liberties here, because you might be never, but if you're doing it with me, you would, I would force you on the third date. Okay. okay. So I tend to eat out often. I do love to cook. I love spicy foods. The one food that I can't stand is cheese. My idea of comfort food is my mother's chicken fried steaks. If I could only eat one thing for the rest of my life, it would be Spanish rice and beans. The one food that I can make really well is T-bone steak. And I would cook for someone on the third date. <laughs> you tend to make meals at home. You do love to cook. You love spicy foods. The one food you can't stand is McDonald's. Your idea of comfort food is your mother's enchiladas. If you could only eat one thing for the rest of your life, it would be peanut butter. The one food you can make really well is pasta. You would cook for someone on the sixth, maybe seventh date. <laughs> I do make meals at home. I do love to cook. I love spicy foods. One food I can't stand is olives. My idea of comfort food is pizza. If I could only eat one thing for the rest of my life, it would be tacos. The one thing I can make really well is pizza. And I would cook for someone on the second date. I love how a lot of your answers were just, what's the whitest thing well, that I could well, put for this guy? So here's the thing. <laughs> Context clues, I will say you're from Nebraska. So I thought corn. Which is funny because I hate corn. Oh. Corn is the one vegetable I will not eat. Good to know. Probably because I grew up in it. It's too much. So, yeah, it's you like had, you, had you can't already. eat the walls off your house, and that's pretty much what <laughs> the rest of grow up. That with. makes sense. The spicy stuff is, in fact, because you're white. Um, <laughs> I don't know how many Irish people I have met that can handle the heat in the way that I can. How about that? There we go. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Gotta give me a chance, man. No, I love spicy foods. Yeah. I, Usually if I go somewhere and it's got, you know, a hotness factor, I always try to order the hottest. Sure. Because I, I love spicy foods. I always say that if you're going to offer me something spicy, I want to feel like I am getting dizzy. Like that's how <laughs> spicy I want my spicy food to be. I got close with pasta you on did. the one thing you can make really well. It's the same and, ingredients, different delivery. Uh, yeah, right. A much better delivery. <laughs> I love pizza. I have like yes. spent the last couple years like developing like the right pizza dough. Pizza is like the one thing that I feel very territorial about that I've been able to like kind of tweak year by year and I am like convinced like, I have like the best pizza. I'm gonna have to try it out. <laughs> I, I love pizza. But if you don't like cheese, I feel like that's gonna be an issue. It's dairy in general because I'm lactose intolerant, mm. but if it's on pizza, that's the only way I'll eat cheese. I can slam an entire pizza to myself. I love pizza. I think it should be its own place on the food pyramid. And your body doesn't just like go on strike afterwards? I mean, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. Ice cream is also a close second. I grew up, our family is very big on dairy because Surprise! Once again, Nebraska cattle, everything. Yeah. But my parents actually run an ice cream business, and so oh. not liking ice cream would be like sacrilegious. family family drama. Yeah, like I mean, 
I, I would have a better chance of like cutting my mother's breaks and <laughs> having the family deal with that trauma rather than being like, I don't like ice cream. I love that your family has an ice cream shop. Oh yeah, they're That's the so cutest cute. little old couple that <laughs> sell ice cream. I love them so much. Your favorite holiday to spend with family is Christmas. You call your mom three times a week. Your parents wanted you to be an ice cream shop owner when you grew up. <laughs> The biggest lie that you ever told your parents that you didn't do anything that they wouldn't do. The person in your family that you are closest with is your mom. My favorite holiday to spend with my family is Christmas. I call my mom two times a week, but I text her every day. Mm -hmm. My parents wanted me to be an actor when I grew up. <laughs> the biggest lie that I ever told my parents was that I was straight. The person in my family that I am closest with is my mom. Your favorite holiday to spend with family is Thanksgiving. You call your mom two times a week. Your parents wanted you to be a lawyer when you grew up. The biggest lie you ever told your parents was that you were straight. The person in your family that you're closest with is your mom. My favorite holiday to spend with family is Christmas. I call my mom four times a week. Uh, my parents wanted me to be an Air Force pilot when I grew up. The biggest lie that I ever told my parents was that I was straight. <laughs> and the person in my family that I am closest with is my mom. I do love <laughs> being straight was the biggest lie. I didn't want to like project that onto you, uh, <laughs> but I do love that that was what we both put for each other. I feel like that if you're a gay man and if, you're, if you have a bigger lie you've told your parents, I want to hear it because... <laughs> when did you come out to your parents? Um, so they always knew, like but being too. religious and stuff, it was, we don't talk about that or no, you're not. Uh -huh. You're just thinking you are. And it was finally after I had moved away to college, I had kind of a, a rough period of time. Mm -hmm. And I finally decided it was either keep going down this dark place I was headed yeah. or finally just live my truth and be happy. And so I came out when I was 19, 19 to my family. Yeah. And my brother and sister were like, cool, where's the nearest gay pride parade? Like, let's go. <laughs> and my parents, um, they took it kind of hard. Yeah. Um, and there was a period of time when we didn't talk. And now they've come around to the idea. It's still not something we discuss. Yeah, sure. But they at least are back in my life and they acknowledge that this is my life and it's not going to not change. change anytime soon. Mm -hmm. I am a big old cliche and came out to my mom in Roots to a Lady Gaga concert. Um, so if she didn't know before then, that was probably her first clue. And I was so, so, so excited. And we went to a mall beforehand to like do some light shopping, get something to eat. And I wanted to get one of those legalized gay t-shirts. So my mom asked me what was in the bag when I met up with her again. I was like, oh, nothing, it's like a shirt. And so she grabbed the bag and saw it and was like, you have to return this. And I was like, okay, are you ashamed of me? I can't believe you're ashamed of me. And she was like, okay, get in the car. We're driving home now. And I was like, no, 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 no. We are all, you're already halfway to the Lady Gaga concert. You can't do this to me. So we sat in the car for like 10 minutes and just in silence before I was like, we can't just go home. And we had this whole conversation and she was like, first of all, I'm not mad at you for being gay. I'm mad at you for thinking that I am ashamed of you. And I was like, okay, fine, mom, but are we gonna go to the Lady Kaga concert or what? Yeah, you're like, I'm already in my fishnets and yeah. crop top. Like, are we doing this We or did what? end up going, but we had floor seats and did not sit next to each other because she was really upset with me. And we oh. didn't speak for like a week because I accused her of being ashamed of me. Now I call my mom four days a week uh, because she makes me. Uh, and we talk about boys all the time. <laughs> I think every gay man really goes through that. Like, It's a weird experience. The way I kind of look at it is like, you are pretty much murdering the child that your parents thought they had. And you're like, get on board here's with this, this new one. baby. Yeah, get like, on board with it. there's no kind of grieving period for them. Yeah. And I think that's what a lot of parents go through. I like that you are centering them in that process. For me, my coming out was more like, I can't believe I have to do this. Like, straight right. people don't have to do this. Right. This isn't for you to know that I'm gay. This is for me to tell you, for me. So I'm like, oh, that's true. I forgot that they are a part of this, aren't they? So I actually came out to my parents at the same time. Mm -hmm. I mean, they both kind of known. I sent my mom the Macklemore Same Love, Same Love of music course, video. Of course. And I wrote out this big, you know, long email like, this is who I am and I can't hide it anymore. <sighs> uh, 
And she emailed back, yeah, I figured you were a big homo, but like, why <laughs> did you think that I would be mad at you? Right. Why would I ever disown you as my child right. or whatever? And so I thought, okay, cool, like, my mom's cool with it. And then the next day was my dad's birthday. So stupidly, instead of celebrating the birthday and waiting until an appropriate time, I bought him a book, How to Deal with Your Gay oh, Son. Oh boy, oh boy. That was his birthday gift for me. <laughs> Surprise. Uh, yeah, he just kind of did the, the typical Midwest dad thing of he looked at it and went, put it away and that's that and all right. Mm -hmm. Yep, <laughs> yep, exactly. And then ever since then, I slowly would come out to people once I trusted yeah. them. Coming out to your family is weird. It's like I came out to my mom. I don't think I really ever came out to my dad. It kind of was just like, I will always remember the time that my dad asked me if I was dating anyone, any boyfriends, and I was like, Okay, I guess we're talking about this now. <laughs> Do you ever find when you're walking around, people like try to get you to come oh, out to them? Like you'll hear like a coworker who's like, "Hey, girlfriend," and I'm like, "Oh my god! All right, here we go. I'm gonna." Or they leave to... out pronouns. Yeah, Are you seeing like, anyone? Your significant other, <laughs> and I'm like, just. I mean, yeah, yeah ask, like, I I'm gay. Yes, yeah. I'm gay. <laughs> I wear like a, like a fanny pack, but yeah. I put it around my back because mm. I don't trust these hoes in this city. And it's got a drag queen pin on it. Uh -huh. And it's especially women over 40. Mm. And they'll always be like, <laughs> like, I'm gay. Right, I'm not man. gonna date your brother just because we're both gay. Well, that's, that's actually, I'm the opposite. I'm like, <laughs> you're like, what's the number? I'm like, if you're gonna like make me sit through this, like, I need you to like set me up with someone as a result. Right, yeah. Right. Just to have cards with your number and be like, listen, I'm gay. If you know anybody, please send them here. Here's my headshot. Help. Yeah. I find that vice versa when I'm asking, when I'm trying to like suss out someone else who might or might not be gay is like figuring out like what the gay code words are. So I'm like, do you straight people know about Kylie Minogue? And they're like, who's your favorite singer? They're yeah. like, mm, Beyonce, and you're like, uh, why? Fun. Yeah, because if they're like, her ass, you're like, well, he's straight. But if they're like, I don't know, Formation was just so out there, you're like, ah. Gotcha, I found it, you. Yeah. My fanny pack actually is like my gaydar giveaway because everywhere that I've ever been, straight somebody always pack, just way. randomly will be like, I love your fanny pack. And I'm like, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I know, I know. you do. Thank I know you, you so much for recognizing my it. My fanny and my pack. Like, <laughs> I know where you're going with this. <laughs> Your deal breakers are people who aren't creative, people who don't like your mom's chicken fried steak, and people who aren't flexible with your schedule. My deal breakers are smoking, being rude, and being lazy. Your deal breakers are people who only like to party, <laughs> they have no drive, or if they're clingy. My deal breakers are someone who can't make me laugh, someone who doesn't watch TV or movies, and someone who doesn't like to eat. Kian, when I first saw you, I said that I would date you. And now that I've gotten to know you more, I said that I would absolutely date you. Aaron, when I first saw you, I said that I would date you. And now that I've gotten to know you, I would still date you. <laughs> <laughs> so what made you say yes? When you first saw me, what was it? When I first saw you, I said, this is a cool shirt that I'm a little jealous that I don't own, which I was like, good sign, <laughs> good sign. Why I would still date you, I like how much you place kindness. That's really important to me, like being empathetic, valuing kindness, that's important to me. Yeah, I definitely said I'd date you when I first sat down because I'm not blind. I mean, <laughs> oh, <you're>, stop. <laughs> you're very handsome, very stop. handsome, very much. And just getting to know you, like, you're funny. Um, <laughs> very rarely can somebody make me laugh oh, as much boy. as you did, so that was good. <laughs> we both think laughing is our favorite, so that's good. That's right? like a good starting point. Right, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was really nervous, not because I thought, oh, I'm going to hate this person, but because it just... I don't know, I didn't feel like I filled out this super long profile about likes and dislikes or anything. It was just like, hey, what are you looking for? Cool, we got someone. And I was like, oh, like I, I wouldn't even trust my mother to set yeah, me up like with that's anyone. Yeah, that's just it. It's like there are a select group of people who I'd be like, yeah, I trust your judgment to set me up. There was an like obvious 
connection mm. through it. And so yeah. that took some of the nerves off, but it's still like. Please don't ruin my life. Like I, I feel like I have like an obligation to share this with people. And what am I supposed to do? Say, hey guys, here's the video. Please don't watch the last yeah. two minutes of it. <laughs> here's me getting my heart broke. Yeah. Um, please like, uh, watch it up until the very end. Um, in other news, I joined seminary. Like, in other uh, news, I am actually no longer gay. Yeah, right. <laughs> this I've learned is no longer working for me after this yeah. experience. Hey everybody, thanks so much for watching Tell My Story. And thanks so much for sending such awesome questions. If you want to see more content like this, then like and subscribe to Soul Pancake. We need to go get some Let's get out of here.